Hi everyone, Pradeep here from TGT and welcome to another video. The iOS 14.7 is here. Let's talk about the features, bug fixes, what's new and should you install. This update came in around 4.54 GB on my iPhone 12 mini. Apart from that, I'm also running this on my iPhone 7, iPhone AC first generation and on my iPad Air fourth generation as well. Along with that, Apple also released iPadOS 14.7, WatchOS 7.6, TVOS 14.7, HomePod OS 14.7, and of course, macOS Big Sur 11.5. Let's check the new build number. As you can see, the final build number is 18G68. So if you have any of these devices shown in this list, this update should be available for you now. To update your device, go to settings, then general, then software update and you should see your update here. But if you are a beta tester and have already updated to the release candidate version, then you already have this release before the general public. If you do not wish to get the beta updates any further and want to stay in the public release, then simply go to settings, then general then profiles and delete the beta profile and apple will stop pushing beta versions to your device now let's talk about the new features and the first thing i should mention that there is a modem firmware update if you are coming from a beta version the release candidate version didn't had any modem firmware update but if you are coming from the previous public release that is the ios 14.6 then there is modem firmware update for you so network and connectivity should improve the second feature is related to Apple MagSafe battery pack for iPhone 12 series, released just a few days ago. These costs 10,900 rupees in India or $99 in US, but are yet to be available in India. But iOS 14.7 already added support for this battery pack. So if you have an iPhone 12 mini, iPhone 12, 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max, this is going to be a nice little addition for you guys, mostly for the 12 mini users. I'll make a separate unboxing video for that once it is available here in India. The next feature is related to Apple HomePod. If you go to the Home app and then press and hold the HomePod, then scroll a bit down, you'll be able to see the timer option here. Well, I cannot show you the option right now because I'm yet to update my HomePod to the HomePod OS 14.7 but anyone updating to 14.7 should see the option here. The alarm option was there before, but the timer is new in 14.7. So that's a useful addition to the Apple HomePod. There is update for the weather app as well, and it is related to air quality index. The air quality index was already available in India, but now the data is being added for countries like France, Canada, Italy, Netherlands, South Korea, and Spain. In the Apple Podcast app, if you go to the library, then shows and look up here, now you have two options here, followed and all. So now you can choose whether you want to display all the podcasts or just your followed podcasts in this list. So that's really handy. Now, if you are from outside India and an Apple Card user, the Apple Card family sharing feature is finally activated. So now within the wallet app in the Apple Card section, you have an option to combine credit limits and share a single account with existing Apple Card users, say for example within your family. So now you can track spendings, pay a single bill, build credit together and receive daily cash. After the update, when you open the App Store for the first time, there is a new pop-up screen just like this. I don't know what is this about and there is nothing specific about it, but it's there. Apart from the new features, there are some important bug fixes and result issues as well. Some of them Apple never mentions about. And the first of its kind is the Wi-Fi bug. There was a bug in iOS that if you try to connect to a certain SSID named just like this, that will completely break your Wi-Fi connection and network settings. You have to completely reset your device network settings to use the connections again. So this was a very odd bug and Apple have patched that with iOS 14.7 update. The next is if you go to the Apple Music and open any playlist, 
just like I have this one then tap on these three dots you can see the share playlist option here though this option was already there but there was a bug which made this option keep disappearing from time to time without any proper reason so this is now fixed they have also fixed an issue where the Dolby Atmos and Apple Music lossless playback would unexpectedly stop this was reported by many AirPods Pro and AirPods Max users while using the iOS 14.6. For some iPhone 11 users, there was an issue which caused the battery service message that may have disappeared after a reboot. For the example, say you have an iPhone 11, there was a battery service message in the battery section, but that will show and disappear after you reboot your device. This is now fixed in iOS 14.7. Within the accessibility menu, while using the braille display, there was a bug that could show invalid information while composing a mail message. In the release note of iOS 14.7, Apple said this is now fixed. Also, I hope the green tint issue for some iPhone 12 users, which is a very annoying thing for a long time now, has finally been fixed. I cannot check that because I never faced that issue, but I hope that it is not there anymore. I have also updated my iPhone 7 in this version as well. I have not seen any changes in performance right away. It is running as smooth as it was in iOS 14.6. The overall scrolling, the app opening and closing is up to the mark as it should be. For my iPhone SE first generation, the iOS 14.7 is okay as well. It is also running properly here. Of course, if you compare it with iPhone 12, they are bound to have some performance difference. This is one of the oldest device and it is getting the iOS 15 as well. We are almost done with iOS 14 already and the device performance is up to the mark, I should say. Also, I am running iPadOS 14.7 in this iPad Air 4th generation. All the updates and patches that I mentioned previously are applicable for this device also. But there is a specific resolved issue for iPad OS 14.7. This update fixes an issue where audio could skip when using a USB-C to 3.5mm jack adapter with iPad. So if you have an iPad with USB-C port on that just like this and, and you are having issues while using the adapter, this is now solved. Apart from that, it is running nice and smooth. I have a lot of apps installed in it and it runs just fine. The battery life I get out of this device is absolutely fantastic and this update should keep that going. Performance wise it is running absolutely fine. I have not encountered any issue with any of the devices so far. Battery life was good on iOS 14.6 though I need some time to test and report the battery life of iOS 14.7 but that should be good as well. As I have already mentioned, we are almost done with iOS 14 and there should not be any battery life issue with iOS 14.7 at this stage. Now if you are interested about the benchmark score, here it is for the iPhone 12 mini. It is 1592 for the single core and 4053 for the multi core. If I show you the history, you can see the scores for iOS 14.6 and iOS 14.7 is already better than that. So that's really good to see. And here are the scores for all the devices that I mentioned here. iPad Air 4th generation, iPhone 7, iPhone SE 1st generation and iPhone 12 mini. Now according to my understanding, you should definitely update to this version. This update comes with some interesting new features. It is smooth and stable and the app performance is good enough. So if you have any supported devices, just go ahead and update. Thank you for watching till the end. Do hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to TGT and I will see you in my next one. Peace.